Hey guys, it's Gabby, and today I'm going to be doing another book review, and this time I'm going to be reviewing A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. So I absolutely loved A Court of Thorns and Roses, and I think I loved it enough to say that I actually enjoyed this world better than the Throne of Glass world. And that definitely is saying a lot, considering that I really only have one book to go off of of this world compared to five for the Throne of Glass world. Um, and so a lot of you are probably looking at me like I'm insane. And I do love Throne of Glass. I definitely do think it is a very good series. But I just connected with this world better. And I feel like the characters themselves are more likable, more relatable, and that the world itself has a lot more promise, a lot more going for it, and a lot more intrigue. And I feel like I'm really excited to see where this world goes. And I feel like it hooked me a lot quicker um, than it did with uh, Throne of Glass. And that's definitely my own personal opinion. But um, I definitely really love this world. And so I think that says a lot. Um to the storyline and where it's going. And maybe it's also because it's a retelling and I've been reading a lot of retellings recently, so that sort of hooked with me because of that. Um, but I don't know, I just, like, I absolutely enjoyed this story and I think it is so fantastic and so worth reading. I did mention before that A Court of Thorns and Roses is a retelling, actually, of Beauty and the Beast. And you get to see that um, portrayed really well in this book. Um, because there's definitely a lot of Beauty and the Beast elements that you see in this book, but they're not overpowering, where it feels like it's the same story all over again. There's a lot of unique elements added to it, where it's mostly its own story with Beauty and the Beast elements added um, into it, which is exactly what I feel like you're supposed to do with the retelling, which is make it your own unique story, but have elements from the original version that you are retelling. And that can definitely be hard for... Um, authors to do because they can either have too much information from the original story where it just feels like they're kind of just writing it down again or have uh, too little information where it feels like you know you're not really giving credit or really um, kind of staying uh, faithful and using sort of your source material um, for your retelling and so it's something that's done absolutely fantastically by Sarah and you get to see it come out so well and you definitely can tell that there's Beauty and the Beast elements in here and you can just kind of see the whole world and how it comes together and how it is very unique and has its very special moments that is its own but then also has moments where you can see where it comes from Beauty and the Beast and you can see the um, elements where the story is retold and that's something that you definitely need for a book like this so definitely does a fantastic job of retelling uh, the story of Beauty and the Beast, which is one that I really, really love. It's really special to me because I relate to Belle um, in a lot of ways, so I definitely would have liked to have seen it done well in, in this book, and so definitely that was one of my big concerns when reading it, and it was absolutely done perfectly. Um, so I'm very grateful and definitely very thankful for that. Getting into the plot of this book now, um, A Court of Thorns and Roses follows 19-year-old Thera, who has to care for two older sisters and her father. Um, and essentially her older sisters really don't want to do anything to help out. They could, and they're definitely very capable um, of doing so, but um, they refuse to help. And her father um, has hurt his knee, and so really he is no help. And so this, uh, Feyre really wouldn't want... Um, you know, him to really do anything because she wouldn't obviously want him to injure himself anymore. So she's essentially completely and entirely on her own having to provide for three other people and she is the youngest in her household. So that's definitely something that's very interesting and something that definitely very much drew me to this book. And so we start out with her going and hunting for this deer um, because her family has not eaten in weeks and they're very definitely very poor. And so she needs to go and out and hunt this deer and get it. And the only thing that is stopping her is this wolf. And so she ends up killing the deer and she ends up killing the wolf and she like skins a wolf and sells its pelts. And then she has the deer for her family to eat. And she thinks that life is great, you know, it's all good. You know, there isn't any problems here. But what she finds out is that that wolf that she killed was a fae. And so that means then that she is going to either have to be killed right on the spot by a fae that um, then comes for her and tells her this or she can be completely exiled from her home land and have to live with the Fae for the rest of her life. Um, and she doesn't have to do any serving or anything whatsoever. She just has to live in the Fae area. And so then, of course, she gets taken um, by the Fae that comes uh, for her, named Tamlin, um, to live um, in the world of the Fae. And so she finds out that there's a lot more to the Fae than she knew about. 
Um, and she despised them before. She, like, hated the Fae and really, like, had no, um, love in her heart for them. And so she's trying to find out more about who these, uh, people are and kind of that there is a lot more to them than she previously knew. And so this whole world of the Fae starts to kind of unfold in front of her and she starts to kind of see that maybe they aren't, um, so bad after all. And so it's really interesting to see kind of the whole world come together and have things finally click and it's just, it's so beautiful. It's such a beautiful story and so worth reading. So I'm going to get into some spoilers now. So if you have not read A Court of Thorns and Roses, go and check it out. So goodbye non-spoiler people and enjoy the book. Getting into the spoilers now, I want to start with this curse um, that Amarantha puts on all this fae. And so we're originally told that it's a blight, but then you find out it's this curse that Amarantha put on the fae. That essentially it's like uh, Tamlin has to fall in love uh, with a human, and the human has to be someone who has genuine hate for the Fae in her heart, and she has to be able to then tell Tamlin that she loves him within a certain time frame. And so Tamlin then sends her away three days before she can tell him, I love you, and she's gonna do it, and oh, that's so frustrating. And so then, yeah, you kind of start to get all this more information about the curse as Feyre gets it, and, start, and then you start to sort of see it all click. And so as it clicks for Feyre, it also clicks for the reader, which I think is kind of fantastic to see that all come together. And then you get to meet Amarantha, who is just kind of referenced as she throughout the first half of the book. And so you finally start to meet, get to meet her, and she's a bitch. Like, you're not supposed to like her, obviously, because she's the villain, but like, damn, girl. Like, I just, mm, I don't like her. She's not, mm, I just, I, mm, no, I don't like her. And you shouldn't, but I don't. Just, oh my god, I have so many problems with her. And I'm definitely very much glad that she died um, at the end of this book. Because she deserved to die. But then I kind of was like hoping that we'd see more of her character develop in the second book. Um, but apparently she's dead. Um, we don't know if she's dead. Uh, most likely she's dead. It says that she's dead. But then once again, she could be alive. Who the hell knows? That's how books always work. But for the most part, she's dead. And so as much as I'm very glad that she's dead, I would have liked to have seen her more develop in the second book and see more of her character and find out more about her. But I definitely think that we're going to um, see her mentioned in A Court of Mist and Fury. Um, but I definitely think her character is very interesting. And am I the only one that feels like when she takes Tamlin um, in the second half of the book that um, she doesn't really care about him anymore? Like, at first, when she creates the curse, she cares about him, but, like, now I think that she's just taking him more to hurt Feyre and, to, and for him to be her plaything. Like, I feel like she doesn't actually genuinely care enough about him to actually want him anymore, and she's just doing it to kind of piss people off, and that, that just, that frustrates me, and I don't know if anyone else thinks that, but that was definitely a big thought I had, um, when I was reading, uh, this book, and I kind of, like, started to see her and Tamlin, kind of, like, how there really is nothing there, obviously, because Tamlin doesn't like her, um, but I feel like she also doesn't really care about him either. We have these tasks that Feyre has to undergo, and definitely they're very interesting to read about, and they're super, like, action-packed, and the writing is super fantastic for them, and it's just, it's absolutely fantastic to read. And I definitely like how it all kind of comes into play and how you have the first task that is like super brutal to read. Um, and then that then causes Farah to get that mark from Rysan, which I definitely think we're going to see more of um, in the second book. Um, or kind of get the more of the repercussions of that and her kind of selling herself to Rysan uh, once a week every month. Um, so I think that's definitely, we're going to see a lot of repercussions from that in the second book. Um, but, so then there's that whole task, and then, like, all the painting stuff, which is really weird. Um, and then you have the other two tasks, and then one where she can't read, and so Rysand helps her. And then the third, in which she essentially has to kill Tamlin, and then it's fate that kind of helps her overhear that situation that realizes she's, she's not going to kill Tamlin, and so she, like, stabs him in the heart, but he obviously lives, because you realize he doesn't have a heartbeat, and that was, like, a major, like, whoa moment for me, because I didn't even see that coming, and so then, like, Farah's essentially dying, and Amarantha's like, you want to know what, you killed him, and you completed all three of the tasks, but I didn't say when I was going to free all the Fae, so, uh, f you, and so then, uh, Farah like is thinking of this uh, riddle that 
Amaranda gave her and she's been thinking it over throughout the entire book and then it's like as she's dying that she starts to kind of have all the lines pop up in her head again and she realizes that the answer is love and so she says that as she blacks out and so then all of the fae get freed, Amarantha gets killed and it's like pretty much a yay ending. So now talking about the ships, um, so we have Rysand and Feyre and I feel like a lot of people are really digging this but I'm really not. Um, but anyway, Rysand and Vera. And so essentially now Vera um, had to sell herself to Rysand um, for an entire week every month um, in order for her to be healed after her first task um, because she was essentially going to die. And so then um, Rysand essentially saved her life. And so now, like, for an entire week every month, she has to sell herself to him. Um, and that's really fucked up, but I'm really excited to see kind of how that plays out, um, in the second book, and I feel like I need the second book to really convince me that there's anything here, because I don't really feel it, I don't, I don't feel it. Everybody seems to be obsessed with Rysand, and I don't feel it. Like, I understand he's good, and he definitely, um, did help Feyre in a lot of ways towards the end, but I'm not feeling him. Not yet. I need time. But... Hamlet and Feyre is definitely, like, endgame for me. I think that their relationship is so special to read about, and it's just so magical and so beautiful, and it's just like, oh my gosh, this is, like, the kind of relationship you wish you could have. It's just, like, so passionate, and, like, Sarah writes it so fantastically, and you just get into it, and it's just so beautiful to read about. And I feel like there isn't any people that really, like, are getting into it as much as I am. Like, Team Tamlin and Feyre all the way. Like, yes. So, you want to know what? Comment down below which team you're on. Team Rysand or Team Tamlin. Let's, I want to see. I want to know what you are. So, comment that down below. So, that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, and definitely make sure to participate in my book hunt project. If you have watched this video and are a fan of Sarah J. Mass and you want to send her a picture of you, like, with this book, um, or a picture of you with her books and send her a message, then you should participate in my book comp project. All the info um, is in the uh, down bar for that video, and I will link the video um, in this one. And so you should definitely do that if you want to send Sarah some love. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So thank you for watching, and participate in the book comp project. Deadline is May 7th, and I guess I'll see you guys uh, next time. Bye!